X Pac 12360. Featuring weekly news, insider commentary, and interviews with superstars, past and present from the world of pro wrestling. A new day is dawning for DX. And now, your host, Sean X Pac Wolfman. Welcome to. Welcome to X Pac 12360, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. How you doing, Jimbo? I'm doing fantastic. How you doing, Jimmy? I'm feeling puffed. TK. What was this? What? What? It was very different. Who? From me? Yeah, it was. All right, what did I do? You kind of just threw your shoulder. Are you back. hearing the ringing? Yeah. What was that dingle? It wasn't me this time. Hmm. Uh. Anyways, we have a good show. Today. <laughs> We have a great show. Fantastic show. Yes, and the we're, we're going to have an interview with Drew Gulak. The I'm pretty sure he's the didn't didn't he invent like the no fly zone? The no fly zone. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, he we're going to talk to Drew a little bit later, and uh, we pre-recorded that from uh, Staple Center at SmackDown tapings last week. Live same. from the Lakers yeah. locker room. Yes, actually we. Uh, full disclosure, we taped this interview before the Shelton interview. We just playing this one after. So uh, it was a fun conversation with Drew. Uh, we talked about a lot of things and, and uh, you know a lot of stuff that you know that uh, he did outside of WWE as well. Yeah, it was very cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll take your word for that, Jimbo. I really enjoyed it. Okay. The, the best is at the end you're like you have anything to ask him I'm like no we took up all his time man like I, can, I don't have anything I could ask him I was just trying to be nice I didn't really want you to ask any questions <laughs> so I'll just leave oh, <laughs> Denise hey there hey there I'm really excited to get today's show started because it feels kind of like different that we're doing this on a Tuesday yeah. and not on a Wednesday I kind of feel like my brain is in another dimension a little bit it's off it's weird right? yeah, yeah it's weird and so I'm like you know trying yeah. to get in the zone yeah and thank you for, for uh, changing your schedule around to accommodate my schedule change and uh, and everyone here at After Buzz uh, accommodating me because uh, TK thank you for uh for organizing all You're this, welcome. so I got la last <laughs> last minute, um, and I still don't have the script yet. But uh, tomorrow, I'm, I'm I think I'm shooting a movie, and I'm doing I'm gonna be a wrestling commentator. Ooh. Yeah, and I believe I'm gonna be doing it with Eric Bischoff. Oh wow! Yeah, wow. Right? so that's kind of that's neat. That's awesome. Yeah, I hope it, I hope every so I hope I get the script and the uh, email, and I hope everything turns out. Okay, since uh, we rearranged everything. Well, it doesn't sound too far out of your wheelhouse. If you don't get the script, I think you'll be okay. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think you'll be fine. Yeah. So I'm sure, like, the, the, whatever it is I was going to say in the movie probably isn't that, you know, <laughs> it's it's not, like, a, a, a hugely important part of the movie. Well, it might be, but if it was, do you think they would be looking for me last minute like that? You never know. No. You might just be what they wanted and they couldn't the whole time, fill right? something. Like they've gone through so many people yeah. and no one fit and someone's like, how about X-Pac? Yeah. Genius! <laughs> yeah, it was actually Rick ba Sorry I'm not looking at you no, while we're good. over here having this conversation. Uh, TK. Uh, Rick Bassman called me. Does anyone know who Rick Bassman From is? From UPW, Remember? right? Yeah. yeah. What did that stand for? Ultimate Pro Wrestling? Yeah. Yeah. And um, so Bassman, he, uh, uh, John Cena came came out of uh, so Bassman. many people. Yeah, came a lot of, of guys. Samoa, Samoa Joe, Joe, Christopher Daniels, yeah. Frankie Kazarian, Nova was there at one point in time. And if we go if we go back quite a long time, uh, a few decades, guess who he's responsible for? Rick Bassman. Yeah. Take a guess. Never mind. <laughs> Sting <laughs> and the Ultimate Warrior. Oh wow. yeah, that's right. He that's actually right. there was a story about that that he, they had like he had like four guys and they told him like pick Power two Team of your, USA. Yeah, pick the two of the best ones and he chose them two and yeah. that's kind of how it went off. And I was thinking to myself when I first heard the story, imagine he would have chosen the other two guys. I wonder and who I the think other two were. The two other guys like I think went off and did like nothing in wrestling. Nothing. Yeah, so yeah. I was like that's that's pretty insane. Like absolutely nothing yeah. beyond the probably the the photo shoot. Honestly, wow. yeah. that's really cool. Yeah, so I remember, uh, I remember when I was young, when I was you know quite a bit younger, 
And and that came out in one of the magazines introducing all those guys. And then, you know, obviously they changed and then, you know, they ended up in uh, Mid-South for, for Bill Watts as the Blade Runners. So I don't know how we ended up. Well, I do know how we ended up <laughs> talking about this because Rick Bassman called me about a movie. So anyways, yeah. Rick Bassman is quite a colorful character in the world of wrestling. Yeah. He's definitely made his mark for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and he used to live in Sherman Oaks, and, and then I moved to Sherman Oaks, and now he's in Maui, Hawaii. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. He's obviously doing pretty well then. Sure. He always did, that guy. Well, he yeah. gets a percentage from all of their contracts, right? Probably. Yeah. yeah. So I'm sure, yeah, John Cena's contracts probably set him for life. Well, no, that's not how. Like, you get like a, a certain percentage for like a couple of years. It's okay. not like oh. in, per, in perpetuity, anything like well, that. that. Forever. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. So, anyways, let's get to, let's get to some uh, some news, TK. All right. One, two, three, wrestling news. Is that kind of low? Um, so they have a new entrant for the WWE Hall of Fame, and it is Hillbilly Jim. Don't go messing with the country boy, country boy, country boy. Yeah. That's such a great song. I love Hillbilly Jim. Even from the rock and wrestling cartoon, he was always such a such a larger-than-life character that you, you, you could see him, and you're yes. like, oh, man, that guy looks cool. He fits the role of wrestling perfectly. And one of you, like, what, like, all of the original LJN dolls, he, had, he he was one of those, like the first like four or five. And mem- like those old dolls, they were made out of this really, really heavy rubber. Do you know? Do you remember? Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and they were like in fixed positions, and like yeah, yeah. Uh, Hillbilly Jim had one arm, like you know, flexing one bicep, and then one like. How do you make them wrestle each other? Yeah. When they're all in these silly positions. That's the biggest thing that people complain about the LJNs. Yeah. Like Rick Rude's or hand his hands are attached to his hips, yes. so he can't do anything but pose. Like yeah. shoulder tackles all day. That's and then the do. Andre the Giant wasn't wasn't that much bigger than the rest of them, so I'm like, yeah. come on. At a scale. Anyways. Yeah. And he had a removable hat, Hillbilly Jim. You could take his hat off. I love really this cool. Jim, but you would know all the facts, <laughs> by the way, of anything tour related. So anyways, Hillbilly Jim. Before he came to the WWF back in the day, he was in Memphis and he was called Harley Davidson. Really? Yes. That's a great name. Yeah. I mean, it fit, it fit him. And uh, what a super, super nice guy. Mm-hmm. When, I, when I first came to WWF, he was uh, already working for Coliseum Video. They had already retired him from the ring, and, but he was, they, really, they liked him so much that they gave him a job working with Coliseum Video. So he had a job like... You know, we saw him every once in a while, nice. and um, and I remember vividly when they shot the angle where where Hillbilly Jim was in the crowd, and he finally came in to help Hulk. And, and that was uh, his first angle. Yeah, like to and go. it worked <laughs> great. It got over like gangbusters. That you know the big guy in the crowd, because you know the thing is, is every week. On TV, you would see this big hillbilly sitting in the front row, you know, and um, part of me wondered, like, damn, this guy's a hillbilly. He doesn't have, you know, much money. How is he affording <laughs> front row, row tickets in all these venues? <laughs> you know, but other than that, like, that thing got over huge, huge. And then, I mean, it got over so so big that they could bring in this guy named Plowboy Frazier, and they called him um, Uncle Elmer, and uh, and so and then they had like cousin Luke and cousin Junior, uh, so you know, and they even brought uh, Jim back when with the Godwins. That's right. When when Henry Godwin um, and uh, and, and Tex and Phineas got together. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because when Henry Godwin first came. He was a vicious monster heel. I don't know if you ever saw him as a, as a singles. Mm-mm. Yeah, he was a bit. He was just like a big mean pig farmer that went in there and just ran through guys. He was a badass man, and he was strong. Uh, Henry Godwin. Nobody. Yeah, people respected that guy. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, so uh, congratulations to Hillbilly Jim. Definitely. Yes. It'll yeah. be awesome to see him back. I think last time we saw him on WWE TV was the Legends House. 
mm. when he was in the Legends house. So he's definitely he looks great, still doing signings and all that stuff. Yeah. So it'll be great to see him give his Hall of Fame speech. Yeah. Anything? Anything on really, Hillbilly Jim? I really, I really want to know how he felt when he got that call because you know it's been such a long time, and then having that call that you're finally like in. And I don't. Uh, how long was his career roughly there? Because I I heard that it was like a lot shorter. Than, well, yeah. Well, his WWE WWF career was only probably only four or five years. Yeah. yeah. So I guess like when he got that call, like it must have been like. Yeah, you know, like yeah. super cool. Yeah. Yeah, but he says himself, like, he came in working with Hogan already on top. Where yeah. do you go from there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he did the right thing. He definitely yeah. made the most of his time there. And so <sighs> therein lies the question on, on who inducts him. And the only person that seems like, like it makes sense to me to induct him is, is Hulk. So how is how's that going to work? Wow. That's a great question. D- that's a yeah. whole another conversation. I just I don't know what they're I I don't know what they're waiting for. It seems like uh, the population has forgiven him for a lot of the stuff that he's done. The one the people that are going to have right. I think right. So there's some that just aren't going or or maybe they forgive him but they just don't want to hear from. Well, him. I mean when you for even the casual fan yeah. that's the first person you kind of think about. Yeah. So it just feels like you, no matter the, the the society that we're in now there's going to be somebody complaining about something. Yeah. So it just feels like I don't know what they're if they wait for everybody to not complain, then we're all going to be dead. All I know so is... We're just gonna, like, hey, it's not... I, all I know is this. Well, not all I know, but one of the things <laughs> I know is this. It, um, when I... Before I moved back out here full-time, I was living in Philadelphia in Chester, PA, which is real... It's as hood as you get mm-hmm. anywhere in the country. And um, so I used to go to the barbershop to get my hair cut... And everyone in the barbershop wanted their Hulk Hogan back. They loved them some Hulk Hogan, and they forgave him, and they wanted them some Hulk Hogan I mean, back. I'm just saying what they said. Yeah, I mean, they we forgot we forgive for somewhat OJ, Michael Jackson, R. Kelly. I mean, and yeah, I don't I don't know what WWE is waiting for, but it just if they're waiting for everybody not to complain, then it's just they're complaining like- about Kobe, um, Oscars, something that happened. 16 years ago. Anyways. Yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I didn't mean to, but, I mean, that is a good question. Who's going to in, induct Hulk or induct Hillbilly Jim? Well, so, in Legends House, it seemed him and Jimmy Hart had a really close relationship, so maybe he's an option. Maybe. Yeah. But, we will see. We, what else is going on? Maybe bring back Henry Godwin. TK. So, this WWE legend is in this amazing rap video. So, Ric Flair. <laughs> I actually saw pictures like weeks ago, kind of yeah. him and with some of the guys from Migos. So he's in this new music video called Ric Flair Drip. It garnered uh, 101, it garnered 1.5 million views on YouTube. Did everybody get to see this video? It's so yeah, it's great. hilarious. I love it. It's just the track is is really good. Yeah. So 21 in Savage general. is on it. Offset from Migos and Metro Booming. It's it's just I don't know. It just is like a cute but funny but. I posted on my Instagram. It was fun. It's like, like another it. thing he gets to cross off like the bucket list of, <laughs> of just a million things that he's done. I don't and even know if it was on of. his bucket list, but it's still <laughs> yeah. kind of awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be on a, a video with 21 Savage. Can you imagine that was like <laughs> his 2018 goals? <laughs> hey, it is right up. It, you know why? It makes perfect sense. That's Nature Boy Ric Flair. Style and profile, <laughs> limousine riding, jet flying, wheeling, dealing, kiss stealing, all of that. Mind you, they got he stole all that from a Red Sovine song, by the way. <laughs> yeah. And he did steal it. I'm sorry. He that's made not it the, his own. Borrowed it. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And more, way, a million times more people know who Ric Flair is than know who Red Sovine is. So. I think what I liked most about this music video, it wasn't your typical rap video. It was just like girls shaking body parts. Uh-huh. It was like, look at these robes. Look at these watches. Look at all this bling that we got. And they're just hanging out, having a good time. What I yeah. did wonder, there was like one scene where I think Rick was sitting like um, in this chair and this chick, very voluptuous in all the right areas, was there. And I'm wondering if like his wife was like in the background, like obviously I don't <laughs> think she has issue, but I was like, you know, I was like, what's going on right now? Like soon... I don't know. She was, I'm sure she was just fine. It was just kind of Wendy, funny to see uh, all that, 
all that in the in the view. So yeah, Kudos well, him. it was really good, and 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 Rick looks good in the video. His suit's fitting nicely. Yeah, he's anyways. So good for Rick, and good for uh, you know. Good for everyone Good for in, a, everyone. in a time where like, music videos aren't even a thing anymore. To make an amazing music video that has millions of views mm -hmm. is incredible. I think starting to come back. The music video realm, it's starting to be like a bigger deal than it was a few years ago. Well, yeah. and you, it's a just different platforms. So, you know, you automatically go to YouTube to watch watch the videos, but it's just kind of what leads up to that video. Like, they were just leaving little breadcrumbs. Like, first, they, um, the Migos had, like, a chain with, like, Ric Flair. And it's like, okay. That chain. Yeah. Oh, man. I hope he didn't get Kari, or Rory snooped on that chain, but that chain was so dope. <laughs> so got Flair with his yeah, and then arms he, out and the robe is diamonds. And that was, like, maybe, what, six weeks ago? And then you see a picture of Ric Flair with one of them, and I'm like, Okay, and then you like they just kind of left these, and then all of a sudden it's like a video. It's like, oh, okay, this is this makes this makes total sense. Now I have to see, you know, what they did in this video. Yeah, they wrap him out at WrestleMania. That'd be <laughs> awesome. That would be that would be, that so, would be so dope. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, next story. A stunt goes <clears throat> wrong for this wrestler. <laughs> So that's like a long chair. Um, so Impact wrestler, star, uh, wrestling star Eddie Edwards was bashed in the eye with a baseball bat in the ring. Yeah. Um, it, the, the pictures are just like gruesome. I couldn't even watch the video. It seemed uh, terrible. But it happened or in Orlando, and um, it was just a stunt that got, gone went wrong, essentially. Yeah, I saw it. I watched it. I, um, I just didn't understand what they were like. To me... And I'm a big Sammy Callahan man, and I just and it was obviously it was an accident, and obviously and and Jim Cornette uh, chimed in, and he's you know that's that's what Jim does now is he chimes in on stuff like that mm -hmm. and runs with it, and um, you know and so Sammy fires back on Twitter, and you know it doesn't come off good for him, but Sammy's a really good dude. He's a really good guy, and you know, something like that happens, and then like, okay, all of a sudden, you know, Jim Cornette's coming at you, and and all right, do I say something? Do I not? And you know, he chose to, and it, it was taken. You know, it it wasn't, it didn't come off well, yeah. I don't think. But like, come on, well, Sammy Callahan didn't mean didn't mean to uh, didn't mean to her yeah. Eddie Edwards. I'm pretty sure Eddie's not too upset about it now. I, I, I'm not 100% sure about that. Well, Where's Eddie at? He actually, well, Sammy did privately, you know, apologize to Eddie. And now, oh, I'm you sure know, he did. Now, that should now, go without saying. Yeah, of course. And now, you know, it's been like a, a, a while now since yeah. this actually happened. So I think that with the whole, the, with the whole Twitter thing, I think Sammy was keeping within his character sure. and impact. So that's why maybe some people thought like, oh, he's he doesn't feel sorry for what he did to Eddie. Yeah. Um, which obviously he did, but I think that's why people took it wrong because yeah. of how he was responding, even though he was actually keeping um, within character. But you know, Eddie's fine now, so he's yeah. definitely going to be at the next pay per view for Impact, uh, April twenty second, Redemption. So we know that it's all good now, but I think. I think that's where a lot of people were pissed like oh he uh he didn't feel sorry but in reality he did and of I, course he did yeah. of course he did and i okay so he's just keeping with this you know the kayfabe storyline in his tweet to, to jim is that what is that what the yeah. thing is here yeah right. he said he was like cashing his bank account or something like yeah. that yeah okay okay we should just like are we gonna like i mean how much my how, how much legs does this have as far as like people care, like, all right, let's get over it. Yeah. it I'm pretty sure Eddie Edwards is fine, and uh, Sammy's a good dude. I don't like this. I just didn't understand. Okay, here's my thing. When it just comes to the actual quote unquote stunt itself, um, like if you have a ball bat in your in your hand, like, and and you really are trying to hurt somebody, you don't try to hit the chair with it. You try to hit them with it. I just don't like all that stuff. You know, I, I kind of lose me on that. It That's all. It kind of reminds me of it's not because it didn't even look that great. Like it oh, didn't. Definitely, yeah. It didn't look for the damage that that it caused. It really didn't look that great at all. Because I mean, you barely could see it hit him. 
It was so fast. Well, compared to something like a concerto. And it was an accident. And it was obvious it was an accident. It was obvious that that happened. When you watch that, it was obvious that happened on accident. He got hurt on accident, not on purpose. Like, if you want to, like, go run with it storyline-wise, like, let's try, to make sh- let's try to make it look like he was trying to hurt him. Does, it, does that make any sense to oh, you? Oh, definitely. It looked like an accident on there. Yeah, because you can even see, like, the chair, like, one second it was placed above his torso, and then the next, it kind of, like, moved, and you can see that Eddie kind of tried getting the chair back to the correct spot, but while he was trying to get the chair back, uh, Sammy had already been swinging, so that's where there was, like, it was, it just, it happened yeah. so fast Tiny. that it wasn't all in the right spot, just, and it was unfortunate. Yeah, I just think, here's what I think about that, those things. And this doesn't this doesn't just go for stunts like that. It goes for just high high spots, moves in general. Like we get, we think these things up in our heads, and they sound so great in our heads, and then and, and it just doesn't it doesn't like translate. You know what 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 you know. Um, <sighs> Yeah, we need to start trying to think of like, okay, how the fans are going to see this, not how like it, how it comes across in our brain. Because oh my God, our ideas are the greatest to us. But if it co- comes across in your brain first, wouldn't you try it out before you actually? Sure, and run it by like yeah. everyone else. And but apparently everyone else thought it was a good idea there too because they did it. So, all right, I I just think that it's silly to to rake Sammy Callahan over the coals over this. That's all. Like, okay, it was an accident. I think that, regardless of what you know, what's was said on Twitter, in character, like I'm pretty sure lessons were learned. Mm-hmm. So, moving on. Moving on. Uh, Cody Rhodes finally gets an event. I uh, get gets a venue for this particular event. So uh, they've been talking about the all-in event for a while. The host city is Chicago, and it's going to be in the Sears Center uh, Arena, and it's going to be on September 1st. I'm assuming the Sears Center Arena is the old UIC Pavilion. I'm not sure, but it sounds yeah, like it, it is. Would make sense. Anyways, yes, it is. <sighs> so uh, I'm happy they finally announced the venue. I'm pretty sure that they're they're going to fill it to up. Fill the 10,000 yeah. seats. Yes, oh, yeah, and. Uh, they're going to have a, a podcast convention that's that's going to be uh, along you know along like with that weekend. Yes, yeah. they're definitely doing something smart with this is a weekend extravaganza. So come like the shows this day, mm-hmm. but the day before we're doing meet and greets, and the yeah. day after we're doing this podcast convention. So and, and I've been I, I was just approached about being part of the podcast convention, oh, and yes. that, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do it or not, but it's definitely something I would like to do. Yeah. With the sh- for the show. And it's a long awesome. weekend, too, right? It's Labor Day yeah. weekend, I think. So, so yeah. I mean, maybe I shouldn't have mentioned it, but I already <laughs> did, so too bad. Uh, so, you know, who knows if that's going to happen or not. But I'm grateful that uh, the person that uh, reached out to me did. And he was like, eh, I don't know if you want to be a part of it. I'm like, why wouldn't I? You're like, all in. And if there's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, they're going to fill this building. Oh, yeah. Watch. I feel like no matter what, like, even because, you know, there's still obviously mm. speculations that they may or may not fill this building because it could, it's, a, you know, it's a tough task and they do an awesome job. But no matter what, like, I feel like they're just going to make tons of money, especially mm-hmm. because, you know, we know that the Bucks are really good at, like, you know, the meet and greets, the merch and all of that stuff. They've been marketing the heck out of this event. So that's why I feel like they're definitely going to sell, like, lots and lots of tickets thousands yes. in advance. Um, but um, I was going to say, I'm, I'm honestly really excited and looking forward to go with this just because, like, they have a goal that they're trying to hit that a lot of people think, like, you know, it may not happen. So just knowing that it may not happen makes you want to attend and makes you want to be a part mm. of this. And, you know, people are wondering, like, who are going to be any special guests? Are we going to be seeing CM Punk show up, considering that it's Chicago or whatever the case may be? I think that this is a cool experience for fans, and especially because it's, like, a weekend thing. Mm-hmm. Like, I love WrestleMania weekend because you get to go to all of these different events. So having this with a bunch of other events together is, like, wrestling yeah. match stream and I think they're catering to that which is cool very cool and I'm all about guys take, uh, taking a chance and betting on themselves mm-hmm. like this got, got big balls <laughs> yeah 
Well, they did it right. <laughs> I mean, they've been talking about it for a while. We we talked about it a couple months ago, and it's just like how they're doing everything. Like you were saying, the, the their marketing and how they're they're kind of leaving the breadcrumbs, and we don't know who's going to show up. But guarantee, it's not going to be somebody who's you know you don't want to see. And it feels like they have the pull to bring on those people that you may want to see, may wanted to see for a yeah. couple months, and they're going to show up. So it's gonna it's gonna be a good when show. is this again? September first. Huh. Hmm. I might be in wrestling shape for a match like that by then. Oh, well, I mean, I'm in wrestling shape already, but yeah, just even better. Uh, we'll see. All right. What else is what, what's going on? What else is going on there, well, TK? We are, we are good, but I don't know if you want to talk about the event that you did last last week. On Thursday, the improv at the Second City yeah. with a flying chuck. Very yeah, enjoyable. Talk, Ryan Nemeth. Yeah. Sean came out. He told he told the story. They did a little improv. It wasn't entirely the kind of improv we thought based on the story. It was really improvers just doing their thing. Well, what it was was an interpretation of, of the story. And it ended up being the story of uh, how I found Lula. How we found Lula. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. And so, anyways, it was it was quite interesting watching their uh your interpretation <laughs> of my story, seeing what yeah, they, yeah, what they really thought. There's some, uh, <laughs> there's some interesting people in the crowd yeah. too watching you perform. Yeah, yeah. Becky Lynch showed up. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, Aaron Rex, aka Ms. Dow, showed up. Uh, uh, Joey Ryan. Joey Ryan. Um, and a whole host of others. Yeah, it was yeah. really cool. Yeah. Something you'd consider doing again? Yeah, I'll do it again. That'd be awesome. You yeah. have stories for days. Like, yeah. It could be like a weekly thing. Yeah. Just... All right. Well, what else is up? Anything? That's it. Yeah. How are we doing on time here? Oh, we're great. Yeah. All oh, right. yeah. We're more than enough. Well, that's, uh, you got any, um, where am I going to be coming up, Jimbo? We want to do that now? Yeah. All right. So Friday, March 16th, you'll be in Cleveland, Tennessee for one, the number one fall wrestling. You'll be wrestling at their show. Their show is on Friday. Yeah. And then Saturday, the 17th, you'll be doing the seminar for them. That's right. All their information is on Facebook.com, the number one fall wrestling for all that info. And then during WrestleCon, you'll be part of the That Wrestling Club or That Wrestling Club's group with Kevin Nash, Mean Gene Okerlund, and Al Snow. All three days. All three days at WrestleCon. More information at that wrestle, thatwrestlingclub.com. For all your information to find out when you're going to be there for that. All right. Cool. What about you, Denise? All right. Well, you guys can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at underscore Denise Salcedo. Sweet. Uh, you can find us on everything. So Twitter, the real XPOC, IG, XPOC12360. If you haven't signed up for the newsletter, you should have already, but you can go on Facebook and sign that. Sign up for that as well. And uh, I am about a week and a half from uh, the marathon um so yeah if you want to donate i'm actually um raising money for water pumps in africa so you can go on a little byline at tk trinidad for everything water pumps in africa they need water pumps they do they do yeah what else do you need tk (laughs) is it birthday season yet oh no the season's starting in uh end of june you're going to remind us, right? Well, yes, it's going to be a whole thing. I'm having a party in Los Angeles. I'm also having a party in Ibiza, a party in Toronto, and a party in London. All right. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a birthday shape. Right. TK is on it. All right, everyone. I appreciate everyone tuning in. We're going to go to the Drew Gulak interview right now. And I think we're going to come back with a little closing segment. What's going to be short. Hey, Xbox 12360 fans. I just wanted to tell you two ways that you can support the show to help it grow. First, if you've ever wanted to shout out a surprise message for various occasions from me, all you have to do is visit celebvm.com slash Sean Waltman to request a video today. Not only does it support the show, but a portion of the proceeds go to charity. Second, to visit ProWrestlingTees.com slash Sean Waltman. That's the only place to grab shirts with the X-Pac 12360 logo, Wolfpack, or many other designs. If you pick up a shirt, make sure to tweet us using the hashtag X-Pac 12360. That's CelebVM.com slash Sean Waltman for a personal message from me, X-Pac. And ProWrestlingTees.com slash Sean Waltman for X-Pac, Wolfpack, and X-Pac 12360 gear. Thanks for supporting the show. Now let's get back to it. Hey, we're here in the Lakers locker room. I mean, I know you can't really tell because of all these black curtains, but WWE was nice enough to put us in here. Yeah. They were nice enough to let you come do this interview with me. Yeah, thanks. 
Actually, did you ask anyone permission? I didn't ask yet. No, no, I just saw you in the hallway. Oh, sweet. Like, literally right now. No, it's okay. Yeah. I said it was all right. <laughs> Thank you. But, oh, no, we were just already talking before before we started rolling um, about, you know, you starting with CZW. And, yep. And um, and that's a, that was at ECW Arena, right? Yeah. Like, that's where their school was. Uh, so, when I got involved, they were in South Jersey and oh. Sewell, New Jersey, around yeah. that area. It was, like, in a, in a, like a soccer arena. And then they moved into the ECW arena right, right, right around then. I think it was KGF three was the first one they started running there. And then the school eventually came out of there. Yeah. So six, seven nights a week, I was in that building. Were you doing like death around. matches and shit like that? I was kept away from death matches. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, like, uh, so six months into my training, Quack and Hero kind of took over the training regimen for the school. Yeah, Mike Quack and Bush, Chikara, right. uh, Chikara Pro Fame, and yep, yep. So Chris Hero, exactly. a.k.a. Cash is on Cash is, Cash is on right. So it became the, uh, the CZW Chikara Wrestle Factory mm -hmm. for a little bit, and uh, they didn't want any of their students doing death matches. I was part of the CZW crew that came on board with that. Right. It was myself, Andy Sumner, and Danny Havoc, who's like a famous death match wrestler. Sure. And... Um, they, they told me, no, Drew, you're not allowed to do that stuff. So I kind of stuck with the technical wrestling and it kind of came up that way. And were you like their technical guy, like their, their go-to guy for technical matches uh, on the shows? I think back, back when I first started, I was just like, you're a student, you're going to learn. Yeah. So I would, whatever they needed, I would, I would get put in. But I was very much the role of like an amateur wrestler because that was also my background in high school and stuff. So I came oh, out with a singlet and I actually had headgear on when I first started. Yeah. Like a real skinny, know-nothing Rick Steiner. Did you ever uh, did you ever think that uh, you needed to have a like high flying arsenal like you know arsenal like you know topes uh, and planchas and you know all this I, stuff that guys our size are supposed to be doing? That's funny, right? Like I I never thought that I had to have anything like yeah. that. I would learn it and practice, and it was a lot of fun to get to to try that stuff. But like for whatever reason, I always stuck to you know the headlocks, the hammer locks, yeah. the chicken wings. Like I, I really enjoyed the submission holds and that side of wrestling. I never felt pressured, at least in my time, yeah. to go out there and, and do that kind of reckless stuff. Uh, but, Which is not really reckless. It's just a different art form. But it can seem reckless at times. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. car crash style. Yeah. Especially in CZW. Like that was, they were infamous for that kind of thing. Guys flying off of balconies and diving through glass like every night. Yeah, you that's know? why like when, when you mentioned that, uh, to me, the CZW thing, it, uh, there's, you know, kind of a disconnect yeah. there. As far I as snuck like, by. Yeah. I did have a couple death matches. You did? Yeah, yeah. I had a no-rope barbed wire match against Danny Havoc. I was in the cage of death once. Yeah. Which did you get juice? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got juice. Did you, yeah. Did you, <laughs> I got good color. <laughs> I got good color. Um, did you eat a couple of aspirin before you got color? So I did. To a, make it bleed more? I did a couple of aspirin. Yeah. Um, I had a, a beer. <laughs> and yes. uh, and uh, some orange juice to make it brighter. Okay. Um, I Bret Hart would have a shot of brandy. Yeah. With the with the aspirin. To okay. Thin his blood. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess that's. I think it was brandy. It was one. It was some kind of uh, <laughs> scotch or yeah, something. something. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. There's like all the little tricks. I actually learned those tricks. I learned them from uh, Drake Younger and Masada. Okay. Like uh, they all knew the tricks of the trade, wrestling in Japan and doing death matches there, and you know that's. That's where I learned all that stuff. I know, yeah, I know, I know all that craziness. Yeah, yeah. But you, um, <laughs> it doesn't really <laughs> doesn't really come out in handy now. But so it's cool to learn. Um, did you like? Did you have a, a hard time, you know, branching out and start doing, uh, you know, other other stuff like getting my name out, and yeah. doing other independence? Uh, I was very fortunate. So the guys that kind of took me under their wing was uh, Joker and Sabian from Blackout. Yeah. Like they uh, they run a tag team in the Northeast, and they worked everywhere. They were in Maryland, they were in Canada, um, all up and down the East Coast. Blackout with Ruckus? Blackout. Yes, with Ruckus yeah, as well. Yeah, sweet. So, like, those guys kind of took care of me and, like, would help me get bookings yeah. and that kind of thing. Um, and then I fell into Jakara, and that was such a regular schedule. Like, it was, it was awesome. Like, between that and yeah. CZW, I was working every other week minimum. Um, hey, so what were, you, what, were your, uh, what were your characters in Chikara? Oh, just Drew Gulak. That's Why it? you think I just have other characters in Come there? No, on, no, dude, no. I have no other characters. Just myself. Just Drew Gulak there. For real. A lot of crazy characers there. You're though, not right? keeping me. Yeah. No. 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 All right. Not at all. No, yeah, I would never. Like you know. I would never you know do that. Chuck Taylor going out as Chuck Taylor, then he'd come out as the ice cream. One of the ice creams. Chuck or... Taylor? He was never an ice cream cone. Yes, he was. No way. He was. An I don't ice believe cream... it. Sorry. Maybe I shouldn't be. Talking I don't believe it. Here. I don't know what you're talking about. There was a dragon for a little bit. Dragon, dragon. I don't know. Yeah, so they had 
had. Uh, I know Quack was was a was an ice cream guy. No way. I don't believe it, it for a second. No, he wasn't. I'm, yes. No, he was Spyro Zul. I remember that. Do you know who Spyro Zool is? No. Look it up. It's on Chikaratopia. <laughs> there's so website. many crazy things on Chikara. <laughs> yeah. Kermit crab. The... Yeah, there's the crab now. Yeah. Uh-huh. The uh, the crustacean nation, I yes. believe they're called. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's, how about the slow motion spot? Uh, yeah. That was a Darren Corbin yeah. original, right? Fellow Minnesota guy. Yes. Yeah. And I didn't know that he actually invented that. So uh, when I was in the King of Trios, uh-huh. and it was myself, Darren Corbin, and, and Eric Cannon. Cannon, right. Yeah, when that started going down, <laughs> when the slow-mo thing started yeah. in my match that I was in. Maybe they'll splice it in or something for you and get the footage. Can yeah. you imagine my reaction, having never seen that before? Wait, you didn't see anything or I know never, about it? I had no clue. So when they were was. talking to you beforehand and said, hey, we're going to go into slow motion here, what they did you think? They never let me in on it. They never told you? No. They shot it on you? I was so mad. Really? Oh, Why? Because you wanted to be in on it. No, because <laughs> I'd never terrible. been in it. Because <laughs> it was just so... Uh, the opposite of everything that I feel like is right. Yes. Or you know, and yeah. But this it was mad. But then the second time I was in a match with Chikara, that's and awesome. That, and that yeah. happened. I was all in, dude. So, I was all in, and Tommy Dreamer <laughs> pulled out a remote control yeah. and went like that, and everyone stopped. I remember this. Yeah. Yeah, that was good times. So the first time that you did it, did the crowd start going into slow motion too? Yeah. That yeah, that really makes it. Yeah. Yeah, Chikara crowd was. It good was. With that. It was. It was Corbin, Corbin, <laughs> Eric Cannon, and myself versus Great Sasuke, Dick Togo, yeah. and who was the other guy? Another guy. Another, uh, Hakushi. Oh, Haku, how could I forget yeah, Hakushi? Hakushi was there. I mean, the, my, 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 one of my arch rivals. <laughs> Jinsei Shinzaki, and right. I, and I even forgot. Yeah, that's that right. Was that, that was the, re- that was the, the guy I stole the Bronco Were you, one, were you one, two, three kid in this one? I was. Okay, all right. Cool. Yes. So you got the special gear made up. Yes. Dude, Quack was so excited to do that. I yeah. never forgot that. And I... Um, and I actually shaved my beard for that. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And when I was done, I said, okay, I'm never doing this again. And I gave my one, two, three kid gear to uh, Colt Cabana. Oh, awesome. And then, like, I think a year or two later, Quack talked me into doing it again. Was this? And I had to get new one, two, three kid, kid gear. Maybe. Was this the same weekend that you also wrestled Generico in the finals of the Raid of Oladoras? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That was, yeah. wow. That was the whole, that King of Trios was awesome. Is that 08 then or something like that? Something like yeah. that. I was still, like, yeah. kind of. I've known you a long up. time. Holy yeah. crap! Yeah, yeah. I was still a little bit like you know, um, wandering around in the darkness, so to speak, on on drugs, and you know, not as bad as I had been. I, obviously, I, I wouldn't have been able to show up and have the matches. Yeah, you killed but, it. You guys killed it. Yeah, yeah, it was really cool, man. Uh, and and the thing about that um, with Jericho, uh, like I was really looking forward to that, and I was I had planned in my mind. Uh, I, I planned, like, I, I, I envisioned this match in my mind, and I knew it was going to take a lot out of me physically. Yeah. I remember, I think and they had a wheelchair did. ready for you backstage. It did, man. Yeah. It took a lot out of me. We man. were all blown away. And I, and the thing that was really cool was um, I gave a little speech after the match, and then when I came back, like, everyone was, like, giving me a standing O, and yeah. I'd never had anyone no? do that before. Oh, well, you deserved it. It was I, one you of the... You deserved many of them, probably. I thank you. It, I appreciate you saying that. It, I just, it was maybe the coolest thing I'd ever felt, man, yeah. like in wrestling. Yeah. That was, and, that, and, yeah. and I feel I had a lot of really cool experiences. I, that, yeah. And so course. that was right up there. I'm, I'm 100% honest with you. That's awesome. And uh, so I actually wrote a note to everyone and stuck it on the wall. Mm-hmm. Like, and somebody took I do a picture remember of this. it. I do remember this. I think it was yeah. Sarah. Sarah Del Rey took okay. a picture of it. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I wish I still had yeah. a copy of it. Yeah. We, we loved having you. Uh, so if you still get to go back there, I'm sure they still appreciate it. I don't, know if, I don't know if you ever keep in touch with them or anything, but like, uh, they're still running, you know? They well, still yeah, about last shows. time I did Chikara with. Uh, Which was this? And it was another King of Trios. It was probably the last one I'll ever be on after this. Uh, <laughs> was this the tag team gauntlet Billy one? Billy Gunn? Too? Yeah. Did you hear about it? Uh, I was there. I kind of remember And then he told it. everyone to suck it. And yeah. I, like, we're trying to say, no, don't do that. And he and thinks he we're kidding. And threw it out even more. <laughs> and <laughs> so he's like, so he, does, so he doubles <laughs> down on it. And like, the one place yeah. that, no, actually, they don't yeah. want that. Yep. And, yeah, and he doubles and triples down on it. And, I'm just, and Quack was so, like, some people are probably listening to this going, what are you guys talking about? Right. But 
Yeah. Oh, we'll splice the footage in, right? Yeah. We can do that? Okay. No, but anyways, Chikara <laughs> is family friendly. Yep. Not even PG-13, not parental guidance. PG. Like, just like, yeah. just, fam it should, might as well call it G almost. Yeah. If it wasn't for the, you know, the physicality. Yeah, that's it. That They give a, you know, at the beginning of every, every show, they give a speech. You know, our show yeah. contains nothing more than you'd find in a PG movie. Yeah. And yeah. so, like, even Bronco Buster. Like, I did the Bronco Buster without the extra <laughs> pelvic thrust. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, extra crotch stuff. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so. Cool. But hey, um, hey. So I work. I, I would stop by the Monster Factory mm -hmm. uh, when I was living in Philly, and I would train with those guys. And Matt Riddle was just starting out. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. He would always talk about how you mentored him and stuff like that. And uh, I, huge fan of his. Yeah. Man. Super and, talented. Um, he told me that uh, that. Gabe uh, sent him to, was it CZW? All I know is he told me he was going to have matches with you and that he was really happy yeah. about that. So actually, me and Matt met um, at my WWE tryout. Yeah. So it was myself, Gargano, Tommaso, Chucky e. T. Yeah. Um, the TM61 guys, uh, they're the Australian dudes. And then um, Matt Riddle was also a part of that tryout. And uh, we just, we met there. And then Gabe had mentioned to me, like, hey, WWE really likes this guy. But due to some certain reasons, we, we're not ready to have him. It'd be great if he can go and train with you. So Gabe yeah. called me. So I guess he'd been learning with uh, Danny and you guys yeah. over at the Monster Factory. And, and Matt came and uh, worked out at the CZW school. It was cool. Like, uh, he just walked in. Hey, bro. You know, he, he just, yeah. just just happy. Just, you just ex-UFC fighter, yeah. super successful Matt Riddle, wanting to be a pro wrestler, coming into the CZW school. And, like, we had a few students there that day. And I said, I'm going to work with Matt for a little bit. And uh, he'd been learning, like, the old school, like, standard lockup southern style learn how to sure. bump and, and you know tackles and all that stuff and like with his background he was more of a shoot fighter so all i did was just circle with him and just kind of push him a little bit and i pissed him off to the point where he gave me a double leg takedown yeah threw me up in the air like six feet in the air and all my kids were like oh my god i was like see what just happened he's like yeah and he, he, he like felt that and connected with yeah. that and just from there he just kind of ran with it we, we drove together to the evolve shows and that kind of thing and Matt just gets it, man. It's it's really cool to see him succeed. In yeah, I, I I think he's a prodigy. Yes, I really do. Man. Supernatural, like real quick learning, yeah. right? Yeah, can do anything in the ring, yeah. and a hell of a personality. Yes, for sure. Yeah. And the, and the, the thing is like figuring out that he just had to be himself. That's it. Nah, That's it. That's just like mostly like the the key. Yeah. Like, to a lot of. I think so. Yeah. yeah. It was for me. Yeah, I, yeah. I for me too. Yeah. So far, it's been now what way. you're doing right now, Drew? Yeah. How much of that is you? All of it. Sweet. <laughs> it's all me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I I definitely turn it up yeah. for the show and stuff like that. But you know, it's been it's been cool being in WWE. Like it's a collaborative process here because mm -hmm. there's so many different people and you know in creative positions. Uh, but they've been very receptive to uh, to working with our ideas and yes. and getting the most out of that. So. Now, when you the, the words that come out of your mouth on TV, are those your words, or are they written for you? They're mostly written for me, yeah. but we are given freedom to uh, manipulate them or make it sound more natural. Uh, a lot of guys will come in here and they'll just see what's written on the paper and they'll go, ah, I can't do this, and they'll go out there and do their own thing, or they'll they'll have it rewritten for them until yeah. it's done. I I try to do my best with what I'm handed. So um, that's good. Yeah, that's good. So, uh, I mean, I told I think it's okay too if you really don't like it to say something. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, if something that doesn't connect, I'll, I'll speak up. Or if something that doesn't look right, you know, I have no problem mentioning that. But it's real easy to go, you know, hey, man, I don't like this. This sucks, but you don't have a better idea to give to him. That's you the know? trick, right? Well, yeah. yeah, if you don't have a better idea, you're kind of screwed. Then you're, yeah. you're pissed off the guy who worked hard to try to give you yeah. something. And now you got and, nothing to fall back and on. And the thing is, like, you know, like some of the people from my generation and, and prior to mine uh, that were around, like when I, you know, and during my time is when writers and writing teams first started to begin to be a thing yeah. in wrestling. And, you know, some people in my generation are like, ah, these damn writers and, the, you know, this and that. And, you know, demonizing uh, writing teams or writers and like, hey, man, they're just coming and doing their job. Yeah, of course. You know, it's not, you don't get hot at them. Right. You know, like... I wonder, was it very much like a foreign concept to have this? Because what was it all shooting from the hip, like back in the day, right? Like you knew, Mostly. you knew kind of what was going on and where the destination was going to be, and then how to get there. I yes, guess was more up to yes. you guys. Yes, and there's something to be said for doing things that way because, mm -hmm. like, I'm, you know, the spontaneity, the, the organic, the authenticity, the authenticity, it. you know, yeah. uh, it comes through. Uh, but you know, I mean, 
yeah, it's, yeah, it was like that, yeah. kind of. And there was no, you know, just like with the matches and that. But, mm -hmm. I mean, I get it. It's, uh, you know, things Similar, change, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Similar to how it was in the independence. Yes. You know, like we didn't have a whole team working for us and, like, various promotions. Chikara is a, a fine example of some place that has a lot more direction. Um, but, like, in Combat Zone Wrestling or Pro Wrestling Guerrilla or yeah. Evolve even, like, it's a lot more fluid, you know. Yeah. So... Hey, those, so those skills were good to learn, too. Can we talk about 205 Live? Yeah, of course. Um, uh, it's a good show. Recently, yeah. yeah. Recently, <laughs> and I think it's going to be getting better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's going to keep getting better. It's still new. Yeah. It's still we're a year in. And, we're a year uh, in, guys. And year. how long has uh, Triple H been uh, hands-on? Okay, uh, so I think uh, originally it was his concept coming out of the Cruiserweight Classic. Yeah. You know, it was very much... Uh, Triple H's idea to bring in a cruiserweight division and, and build this brand up. And as soon as we came over, Vince was like, hey, this is great. Let's run with it. And he kind of took the ball and ran with it. And then uh, up until the last couple weeks um, where they basically went into the idea of having a tournament again to rechristen uh, the new cruiserweight champion. Yeah. That's pretty much been under the guise of Triple H. Yeah. yeah. Any, have you noticed any, different, any differences? Well, no. Um, definitely the show's format. Uh, We've had longer matches. Um, that's really the big thing is that yeah. it's been focused on competition. I think that lends itself to the tournament that's sure. happening right now. And I, I, I think that longer matches are, are, are some. I, th I think if you look at the success of the other week with the gauntlet match, mm. that was like two hours and, and did really good ratings. Yeah. I think that, you know, speaks to what people yeah, want nowadays. That's, that's such a good indicator. You yeah. Know? That's pretty cool, actually, now that you mentioned the, the gauntlet. Yeah. That's pretty wild. Yeah, I, 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 um, maybe they should do more things more gauntlets like that. Yeah, every week, every week a gauntlet. Too, I, I don't know about every week, <laughs> but well, what if there was a, uh, a uh, yeah, show? Yeah, why that can't was a match go you know that long? Yeah, yeah. Why not? you know, it's a fight. It's got to yeah. end at some point. Ten minutes every week is the same. I don't know. Change it up is pretty good. So it was nice to see. It was very refreshing. Yeah. Uh, any um, any talent that's not in WWE right now that uh, you'd really love to see here? To keep an eye on that I'd yeah. love to see here? Well, I, we were talking about Joey Janela yes. earlier. Um, he's someone who's come through you know, the, the CCW school and worked hard uh, later on in his career. That's right. And lately he's just been doing a great job. Um, so if it was something... It, he, he's proven to me that if he has a goal and is, and is set on something, he can go out and achieve it. So it really yeah. it just comes down to if you, if you really want it. You yeah. know, if you're willing to do the things to kind of adjust and, and get here i think it's within reach for, sure. for certain people um, so yeah um he like he'd been wrestling for quite a while mm -hmm. and then decides gonna go train at czw mm -hmm. which is i think a lot of people will go oh i've been right i've been in the business for how uh, long i don't need to be going back to wrestling school yeah he didn't have any of that attitude when he came great through, which was really nice yeah and uh, i have a lot of respect for him for that and it was cool like he saw czw as an opportunity to just learn and get better which, uh, which and, he, it, and he, he used that, yeah, and he, he used, used it. it for that, and yeah. it worked. Yeah, now he's getting around. Yeah. He's doing Gorilla now, which is pretty cool. Yeah, he's Who traveling else? to Europe. Uh, so I got a, uh, a student in Wheeler, Utah, uh -huh. who's coming up. Um, he's from the Carolinas originally, and then he came and trained with us in the school too. And now he's um, he's working quite a bit, he's mostly for Beyond Wrestling up in the sure. Northeast. Um, That's up in the New England area. Yeah, yeah. or not New England, like it's Massachusetts, in, yeah. Rhode Island kind of yeah. area. Um, but he's, he's a very promising kid. He reminds a lot of people of, uh, he's remind people of a Steamboat, Ricky Steamboat. People are saying, nice. like, the way he moves and conveys emotions in the ring, very much like that. Sells. Yeah. You're very good at registering yeah, with facials. the face. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you get a kick out. So uh, he's one to keep an eye out on. Yeah. Uh, some of the girls, I think Penelope Ford and Brittany Blake, two of my students that uh, really work hard, um, very very gifted as far as potential and stuff like that. Brittany's one of the toughest people I ever met. Yeah. yeah, one time in practice, she broke her leg and didn't even realize it. Came in the next day with a full cast on. Okay. Yeah, so like yeah. that kind of attitude is, is cool if you're going to stick with it, you know? Sure. Yeah, just a freak thing like that. Uh, yeah, so those, those are four names I'd, I'd put out there. Hey, any word on how Rick Shea's doing at the Performance Center? He's doing great. Nice. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of a rhetorical question. Obviously. Of course he's going to do great, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, he's, he's, he's enjoying it very much. And what, a, I mean, honestly, that guy, um, besides the obvious, like, if you don't know the guy, like, if you, like, meeting him, like, and, and getting to know him, like, makes you just even that much yeah. a fan of that yeah. guy. What a good dude. He yeah. Is. Everything that guy gets, he deserves. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's, he's an old school Chikara guy. Yeah, too. he is. I didn't even was. realize it because, yeah. like, I had seen him and he was so skinny back when I first oh, yeah. met him. He looks great now. Yeah. He got ripped. Yeah. Doing those rock workouts online. Yeah. That's what he's doing. <laughs> hey, do you have a dog? Uh, I do. I have a Shishan named Cupcake. Yeah. He's a terror. Yeah. Yeah. Shishan. How Shishan. Half Shih Tzu, half Bishan. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So do you not bring her on the road, or he? No, 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 no. She stays at home with her grandparents yeah. right now. Um, yeah, she actually just got her teeth cleaned today. Oh, good. Yeah, so she's yeah. a little groggy. She's a little out of it. Huh. Yeah. So um, what's, tell me, like, before I let you get out of here. No, I appreciate cool. you. We'll I hang appreciate out. you doing this. Oh, that no, was my pleasure, dude. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's man. cool. Um, uh, do you have any any plans you can share with me for what's coming up for you? Plans? Well, I'm going to beat the crap out of Mark Andrews next week. Okay. And then... Uh, I'll be moving on in the Cruiserweight Tournament after I demolish him. Yeah. Sweet. You know. Yeah. And what about uh, Drake Maverick? Drake Maverick. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good guy. Great yeah. uh, visionary. Visionary. What a haircut. Yeah. And, like, yeah. the guy has, like, he, he has it together. Like, I mean, he's got it down pretty good on on everything. On the, you know, the oh, he's awesome. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 everything. He's yeah. very, uh, very fun to yeah. be Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Big fan. it's fun. I met him in England a while ago down for a Fight Club Pro in England. Yeah. yeah. We actually wrestled against each other, and he's, he's pretty good. He's pretty Did you good. spend a lot of time in Europe? I, I was very lucky to do a bunch of tours over there. You fit right in over there. Yeah, I it was yeah. a lot of fun. A lot of fun, man. Germany, uh, yeah. WXW was the promotion yep. that got me started over there, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Sweet. Did some of the Butlins tours. Did you ever do Butlins tour? No. No, you never did Butlins tour? No. Oh, for, man. Um, for, uh, Brian Dixon. Brian Dixon. Yeah, 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 yeah. You never went over at Gangrel and hung out? No. Did, no? PN News? No. I'm going to be honest. Like, one time, okay, it had been after, like, you know, I had been kind of, like, I left here and sure. I was all messed up for a while. Okay. Uh, I reached out uh, to Brian Dixon mm -hmm. about potentially getting booked, and he asked for a... a like a, a, a audition tape. Dude, he's in his own, they're in their own, yeah. Yeah. He's in his own world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you were like, screw that, I'm not I'm doing like, it. I'm like, you want an audition tape from a guy <laughs> that you had somebody else impersonating exactly. on your the, shows? Exactly. You do all your moves. Yeah. doesn't matter. You don't want the real deal? He you doesn't wanna, know. Yeah, He okay. did, straight up didn't know. <laughs> to him, that was just like, is that popular now? Okay, go yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was a hell of an experience. They were doing 619s on every show in the main event. It, that was like the, the big, really the tiny big ring. Yeah, two yeah, step yeah. ring. Yeah, it'd be the fourteen footer sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I like those little rings, man. Yeah. I mean, it's a challenge sometimes, mm -hmm. but at least it tightens the action up. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, that's, these a good, that's a long, great point. These long spots, man, and the smaller we are, the sillier they look. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. When it <laughs> takes, when you could like, you know, let me get a cup of coffee while you're hitting the ropes. Yeah. You here, know? here it's like a lot of the whips and stuff have to come from mid ring. You know, and like they that kind should. Of stuff. Yeah, exactly. They should. Um, it's a little easier to get away with it with a shorter ring, for sure. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Dude, hey, man, I appreciate you taking no, the Sean, time. Thank you. Thanks, Always Drew. a pleasure. I'm a big yeah. fan. Thank you. Likewise. Thanks, man. Yeah, big All fan right. of Lola, too. Follow your social media. Oh, oh my yeah. social media. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Drew Gulak. You can follow me on Instagram at uh, Drew Gulak. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, D R E W G U L A K. It rhymes with attack. I'm also on 205 Live every Tuesday on the WWE Network. Hey, was there anything you wanted to ask, Jimbo? Huh. I mean, we're no super good question. All right, so that, wow, that flew by. <laughs> All right, sweet. Yeah. All right, ma'am. Thanks for hanging, Sean. Thank you, Drew. It was a pleasure. All right, I want to thank Drew Gulak for taking some time to talk to us at the SmackDown tapings last week, and uh, kind of insightful. I thought definitely cool to learn people in WWE. Their journey doesn't start there. It has a not. whole lot to get to where they're at, and he's worked really hard to get to where he's at. Yeah. Yeah, I love the it. whole talk on Chikara, but my favorite part was at the start when you were like, how did we come about for this interview? And he's like, oh, I saw you in the hallway. I was like <laughs> dying of laughter in that part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, anyways, I guess that's about it. I just wanted to come back just so we could waste some time and <laughs> do this outro segment thingy. So, so everyone can plug their Twitters again. Yeah. No, we don't need to do that. Okay. Let's just say goodbye to everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> Xbox 12360. Right here on the Jericho Network on Westwood One.
From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, Sean Waltman, producers Mark Donica, Jimbo Frank, and TK Trinidad, and the entire Xbox 12360 staff, we would like to thank you for tuning in. Like us on Facebook, rate and comment on iTunes and YouTube, follow Xbox on Twitter at The Real Xbox, and email us at Xbox1236 show at gmail.com.